acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate your sacredness. I confess to Almighty God, in the name of my brothers and sisters, that I have prayed in sin, and in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary of the Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. Now, may God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Ezekiel. Thus says the Lord God, O my people, I will open your graves and have you rise from them and bring you back into the land of Israel. Then you shall know that I am the Lord when I open your graves and have you rise from them, O my people. I will put my spirit in you that you may live and I will settle you upon your land. Thus you, thus you shall know that I am the Lord. I have promised, and I will do it, says the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
a reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, those who are in the flesh cannot please God, but you are not in the flesh. On the contrary, you are in the Spirit. If only the Spirit of God dwells in you. Whoever does not have the Spirit of Christ does not belong to him. But if Christ is in you, although the body is dead because of sin, the Spirit is alive because of righteousness. If the Spirit of the one who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, the one who raised Christ from the dead will give life to your mortal bodies also through his Spirit dwelling in you. The word of the Lord.
Let us go to him. So Thomas, called Didymus, said to his fellow disciples, Let us also go to die with him. <clears throat> when Jesus arrived, he found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb for four days. Now Bethany was near Jerusalem, only about two miles away, and many of the Jews had come to Martha and Mary to comfort them about their brother. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went to meet him, but Mary sat at home. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now I know that whatever you ask of God, God will give you. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise. Martha said to him, I know he will rise in the resurrection on the last day. Jesus told her, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, even if he dies, will live. And whoever lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, Yes, Lord. I have come to believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God, the one who is coming into this world. When she had said this, she went and called her sister Mary secretly, saying, The teacher is here and is asking for you. As soon as she heard this, she rose quickly and went to him. For Jesus had not yet come into the village, but was still with Martha and had met him. So when the Jews who were with her in the house accompanying her saw Mary get up quickly and go out, they followed her, presuming that she was going to the tomb to weep there. When Mary came to where Jesus was and saw him, she fell to his feet and said to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping and the Jews who had come with her weeping, he became perturbed and deeply troubled and said, Where have you laid him? They said to him, Sir, come and see. And Jesus wept. So the Jews said, See how he loved him? But some of them said, Could not the one who opened the eyes of the blind man have done something so that this man would not have died? So Jesus, perturbed again, came to the tomb. It was a cave, and a stone laying across it. Jesus said, Take away the stone. Martha, the dead man's sister, said to him, Lord, by now there will be a stench. He had been dead for four days. Jesus said to her, Did I not tell you that if you believe, you will see the glory of God? So they took away the stone, and Jesus raised his eyes and said, Father, I thank you for hearing me. I know that you always hear me, but because of the crowd here, I have said this, that they may believe that you sent me. And when they had heard, when he had said this, he cried out in a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out, tied hand and foot with burial bands, and his face was wrapped in cloth. So Jesus said to them, Untie him and let him go. Now many of the Jews who had come to Mary and seen what had gone before, what he had done before to believe in him. The Gospel of the Lord.
one thing more difficult than giving a homily to just a few people. And I knew it was going to be brutal many years ago when I gave a homily to my seminary classmates, my brother seminarians. <laughs> they were brutal. Today, on the fifth Sunday of Lent, it has an introduction to this particular Mass that I found to be particularly good, and I'm just going to read it. It's only a small paragraph. It says, From time immemorial, God has promised, O oh my people, I will open your graves and have you rise from them. Then you shall know that I am the Lord. But this will not happen before Jesus weeps. He weeps in front of doubt. You want to go back there? He weeps in front of nihilism. Could he not have done something? He weeps in front of fatalism. Lord, by now there will be a stench. This is the optimum moment for God to have Lazarus rise from his grave. For then the event will teach us just how far we must go in trusting the power of Jesus' love for us. Although dead because of sin, the spirit of the one who raised Jesus from the dead will give life to your mortal bodies also through his spirit dwelling in you. Now the other added bonus to this is Rembrandt's 1630 painting of Jesus raising Lazarus. Again, we're probably again focusing on that since we don't have that technology. But there's Jesus. Rembrandt painted this when he was 24. He wanted to hold on to this particular painting. His whole life from death caused him to sell it. I think 28 years later. It's a startling painting. They're all looking down into the tomb with Jesus' hand raised. Very interesting. Come out, Lazarus! One of the meditations says he was angered by death. And that there was a battle against Satan that he easily won. Everybody was frightened of death. today is death. We're all afraid of the violence. We're not afraid to destroy children in the womb. We're not afraid to euthanize the elderly. because 
because it is a condition in murder. The same people who are furious about the virus want to promote death by abortion to make sure that there's money to kill children. Even some Catholics have voted to make sure that there's money to kill children. But nobody raises an eyebrow. But when it comes close to our homes, There is a fear of death in the spiritually immature. I can tell you that there is not a fear of death in the spiritually mature. mature. I see them. Father, it's my time. I'm patiently waiting for the Lord to take me. Actually, Father, I'm looking forward to it. I've seen everything that I can see on this earth, and I want to be with our Lord. I want to be with all the saints and angels in heaven. Now I tell the story all the time. Most people don't know what happened to Lazarus. Well, he became a, a bishop. I forget whether it was on the island of Cyprus or Crete. But he became a bishop, and it is said that for the remainder of his life, for 30 years or so, he never laughed. He never laughed. I guess when you come back, he was in the realm of the dead. He couldn't have been in heaven at that moment, but I'm sure the friends of Jesus probably went to a very pleasant place in the realm of the dead began to see all of the prophets, the patriarchs, the matriarchs. He began to see those that he knew who had died. And then Jesus calls him back at the beckoning of his sisters. We have icons of them up here. You can't see them now. They're under the, the cloth. But this one here has Mary Magdalene, the sister of Lazarus. It's a beautiful icon. Here, I don't know if the camera goes this far. Maybe I'm on camera right now, but there's an image of Martha. Whoops. Oh. I guess Martha wants to be seen. <laughs> and then over here on the other side, which I'm sure you can't see, but I'm going to walk over here just with a few people who are present. There is the image of Lazarus. And it says Lazarus. Oops, the friend of Christ who was four days in the tomb. We'll have to put that up back in rest too. There is one time that he did laugh. It is recorded in the words of the church fathers. He saw a man stealing a clay pot. And he chuckled. And he said, Clay, steal it, clay. You have to have a really <clears throat> intense sense of humor to get it. I do. He never learned something to think about. This story tells us that we have to be careful about making judgments about what God's intentions are. For all of eternity, God planned for this event. For all eternity. Lord, if you would have been here, I'm not supposed to be there. I'm not supposed to be there. We hear it all the time. You didn't come to your father's death, this, that, you were late, this. People let that go.
Jesus is God. We are not. And what he wants us to do is love one another. Jesus saw her weeping, and the Jews who had come with her weeping, he became perturbed and deeply troubled. He said, Where have you laid him? They said to him, Sir, come and see. He was truly man. He saw the love and it moved him. This disease has brought about very curious words that I have seen everywhere. And I have even used them. Uncertainty. During these times of uncertainty, I got news for you. Every day is a day of uncertainty. You never know what's going to happen. If you are close to Jesus, if you are close to the Trinity, if you are close to God and His Church, you are close to your friends and neighbors. What will fill your heart? Uncertainty is part of life. What we are commanded to do is to love God with all our heart. with all our mind, with all our strength, and all our soul. And we are to love our neighbors as ourselves for the sake of God. If we do that, we will be secure and confident that death which is guaranteed, will not frighten us because we will await the same voice that Lazarus heard. Lazarus, come out. Philip, come out. Thomas, come out. Check, come out. Tony, come out. Marilyn, come out. Kate, come out. Anne, come out. And even Chris, come out. I got a two for one. It's a nice prayer. Jesus, may I hear you call me to come out of the grave. Keep praying. Do not be afraid. Help each other. All will be well.
creed, I want you to pay attention to everything that we believe. And as I ended my homily, we talk about this resurrection. I thought the creed ends with this hope, with this faith, with this love. I believe in one God, who, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, Lord of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men, for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate to the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come.
becomes for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we receive the wine we offer you. Through the divine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Sacrifice in yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. And the Lord is the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good all his holy church. Hear us, Almighty God, and having instilled in your servants the teachings of the Christian faith, graciously purify them by the working of this sacrifice through Christ. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. And lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God through Christ our Lord. For as true man, he wept for Lazarus, his friend. And as eternal God raised him from the tomb. Just as, taking pity on the human race, he leads us by sacred mystery to new life. Through him the host of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exalted praise as we acclaim. similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. <coughs> Thank you. 
the way of the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter on the Lamb, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Let us pray. We pray, Almighty God, that we may always be counted among the members of Christ in whose body and blood we have communion, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow down to the blessing. Bless the Lord your people, who long for your gift of your mercy, and grant that whatever prompting they desire, they may receive by your generous gift, through Christ. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God.
banish this virus and, uh, to protect us from the wickedness and snares of the devil and also our Blessed Mother who intercedes for us. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our defense against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke you, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and the other evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. 